Welcome to Face Forward, the podcast, the series that takes you behind the scenes of the riveting world of clinical trial management. I am your host, Valerie Coveney, and I am thrilled to be your guide on this journey through the nuances of planning, executing, and navigating the clinical research landscape. With us today is a seasoned project director with more than 15 years experience in the industry. Join us as we dive into a particularly important area of research, the challenges of multi-center studies in alopecia areata. We will be exploring these three crucial pain points in our discussion, patient severity, the subjective nature of SALT, and unmet needs in AA. Let's extend our warmest welcome to Innovaderm's project director, Fadi Ashkar. Hi, I'm really excited to be part of this podcast. I'm really looking forward to this discussion. Adzi, before we go any further, could you give our audience a brief overview of the AA condition? Of course. Uh, alopecia areata is a disease that is represented by hair loss in patches on the scalp. It also affects the body, and it affects males and females. I find it particularly interesting because it's not just a dermatological disease that happens on the skin. It goes deeper. It affects people's minds, their lifestyle, Um, and it really is great to be part of this clinical research that can potentially help these patients. Okay, so it has been determined that patients presenting with severe AA are willing and available to take part in these studies, but my understanding is that they may not be the most suitable candidates for proof-of-concept studies. Could you tell us a bit more about that? Yeah, you're right. Um, the patients who have the most severe form of alopecia areata are often willing and able to participate in our clinical trials, and that's great. Um, however, they might not be representative of all of the population that we're trying to treat, mm -hmm. especially for proof of concept studies. So uh, we want to make sure that we have a varied range of severity on the clinical trials so that we can see how the drug affects the different stages of alopecia mm -hmm. areata. Uh, what we usually do is we add a cap in the protocol, so a maximum amount of patients who have, for example, very severe or the highest forms of uh, severity of alopecia areata, let's say, for example, 10%. That way, we have the remaining amount of patients who are uh, from the lower or mid-range levels of alopecia areata, and when we analyze the data, we can really see how the drug affects these different ranges. Mm. Okay, would this be more challenging in a multi-site studies? Yes, uh, it does add a little bit of challenges, Uh, mainly because when you add a cap to a study and you've got multiple sites, you want to make sure that uh, the information that the cap has been met is well transferred to the sites. You don't want to go above that cap. So it's important to make sure that your teams inform the sites and that we have systems mm -hmm. in place that allow us not to exceed the caps that we've done when we're working with more than one site on a clinical trial. Mm -hmm. So earlier, Fadzi, you mentioned severity, uh, and I was wondering, how would you assess hair loss? So the um, assessment of hair loss in the clinical setting is usually performed uh, by using you know, mild, moderate, or severe. But in clinical research, we need a more validated tool. Uh, one of the ones that is often used is SALT, severity of alopecia tool. This one allows the assessor to uh, grade the scalp by quadrants. There will be four quadrants. And then the scores are compiled to give a total score that goes up to 100. So if the patient has a SALT score of 100, it means that they have lost 100% of the hair on their head. Mm -hmm. This is a very useful tool because it allows us to make sure that we have consistency between investigators, assessors, and also uh, consistency across the studies that are performing uh, clinical research on this type of treatment. What's important to note as well is that we have often uh, the addition of taking photographs during the visits where the patients are at the sites. And these photographs allow us to perform a QC review versus the SALT score that was given by the assessor, just to make sure that there were no errors in the assessment and to make sure that we have this kind of very visual progression of the study drug and the treatment, the way that it's working. But we have to remember that the main score is the one that is performed by the assessor, often the PI or the sub-I who is a dermatologist, because they have the patient in front of them. They can move the hair around and really kind of look at the scalp. Mm -hmm. And it's always a better quality than pictures that are analyzed post hoc. Mm, okay. So let's shift the focus here on the treatment landscape. Could you expand on the challenges and opportunities presented by these approved treatments? Yes, of course. So what's interesting with the treatments that are available to alopecia areata is that up until a couple of years ago, 
there were none. And now we've got two JAK inhibitors who have been approved by the FDA and European countries as well as uh, Health Canada. So this shift in landscape that has recently occurred was extremely interesting uh, for someone like me who's part of clinical research. Mm -hmm. It's also extremely interesting for patients who now have an option. However, there is still a lot of room left for additional clinical research because alopecia areata is um, a multifaceted disease that can be attacked in different ways using different pathways. And we can still see that because of the ongoing research in alopecia areata. Everyone is aware that there's different ways of resolving this, and this concerted effort is something that I'm extremely happy to be part of. Amazing. So this concludes our last question for today's conversation. It was a true pleasure having you today, Fedz. Thank you so much for having me on this podcast. It was really a pleasure to talk about alopecia areata. And uh, for those who will be there, I'm looking forward to seeing you at the Innova Durham Breakfast event at AAD in San Diego in March. Perfect. See you there. As we conclude another illuminating episode of Face Forward, we find ourselves at the crossroads of science and progress. Remember that behind the jargon and statistics lie stories of unwavering commitment, meticulous observation, and the pursuit of evidence that shapes our understanding of health and disease. Stay at the forefront of knowledge and innovation and follow Face Forward on your preferred platform. My name is Valerie Kovny. Thank you for joining us. Until next time.